Thanks, everybody, for coming. Um, I wanted to open up tonight by reflecting a little bit. I spent a lot of time thinking about last night's meeting, and I'm sure everyone else did. I know Emil and Rick did. And I just wanted to uh, just make a few comments about that. I, we got the message more than once that we aren't responding. You know, the board didn't say anything. That doesn't mean we're not thinking. We have, we spend an awful lot of time in this, and we may not respond to every single comment that comes out of the audience, but that doesn't mean we don't think it's very important and listen to what you have to say. So with that in mind, I just, I really wanted to say that we did hear you. We heard the town, the municipalities, and we understand we're on notice that you can't sustain the compounding increases that you've had. Your numbers are compelling. What we got from Winterport and Newburgh showed that that's a, that is a rate of change that prices us all right out of the market if we sustain it. You want us to think differently. We heard that. And that the town support education and children, but that compounding impact of increasing budgets is just not sustainable. We don't see any relief for the towns, and we need to recognize that as we move forward. And we also heard loud and clear that you're not terribly thrilled with the quality that we seem to be spending more and more, yet our levels of performance seem to be about the same or less. And so what we heard is we should continue to focus on excellent and achieve it while addressing the current economic issues that we have that impact the towns. We also heard you that we're dealing with a shrinking population and paying for it with an aging population. And this formula is not in everyone's, anyone's favor, so we all need to work together to deal with it. And we heard Peter, I mean, Peter Witt's not here tonight, but um, basically what Peter said is stop patting yourselves on the back and look at ourselves in the global context. And in the global context, we're mediocre. That children coming here, and I've actually experienced this myself, are performing at higher levels academically than what they enter into in the high school. So I, I think we need to look at that. I, I agree with that. We can't just sit on what we've always done at the same increasing price and expect that 10 years down the road, we're going to be globally in a place where we've educated students to survive in this world. And I'm thinking about that, you know, Maine struggles to be any kind of economic competitor, but what if we just changed the way we were doing things and we put Maine on the map in a different way? What if we had students that could be fluent or darn near fluent when they came out of college? You know, that would change how people looked at us when we came here. And that's just one example. Um, and we really do look, and basically what he was challenging us is to be courage, courageous and innovative. Don't keep doing the same thing over and over again, and, and, <coughs> because you will get the same outcome, basically, is what he said. And he said, and, and, and I think that we, really all should look forward to get, this is a community issue. Educating our children, dealing with the cost of education, it's a community effort. And I think we all look really forward to working with all four municipalities in the Education Foundation to have this conversation going forward. The Budget Committee is at the end of the process, and we're sitting here tonight with a budget that folks have put nine months into? Yes. And, and to have this kind of communication discussion with the communities is too late in the process because we're not at a point where we can really refocus. <coughs> I mean, we, we, can't, we can't really react more than what we have here today. So we need to have that conversation on a continuum. And we have constraints. We have regulations, rules, and laws which dictate our spending. And these constitute a part of the fiscal picture. We can't just throw all the cards up in the air and hope they land in a cheaper place because we have things that guide how we spend our money. We're taking more care of more than just academics here. And we, that's just a part of what we have to deal with. And then I think we'd need, we make a commitment. We hear you. We've already started the conversation. I've been having conversations like this with others yesterday. I know Emil's been having it, Amanda has had the opportunity to have conversations recently. Everybody is on, really thinking about how can we do things differently. And it's, you know, we're not alone in the world. Read the paper, and we're all trying to figure out how to do things differently. 
So board members here have heard you, and I know many of them left really thinking. I heard, had more than one conversation on the way out the door last night. We need to think differently. And so we are committed to being courageous, creative, and we are fisc fiscally conscious. We really are. We spend a lot of time thinking about how we can do things and we're going to do better. But ultimately, this is a partnership. And we may propose things that will make people unhappy. And we may fill this room with people and citizens, not educators, as was pointed out last night, that when the room's full, it's educators, it's not. We know there are citizens in this community who watch what we do very, very carefully and have very, very high expectations of what we deliver. And when we fill this room, if we fill this room with people who will resist the changes we put at the table, we need your community support. We need support of our leaders in the communities because you're the ones pushing and asking for this change. Not that we don't believe it, we agree with it. We're con we are concerned about changing the way we deliver education for students for their education's sake, but we understand the need for the fiscal sake. But you have to be in the room here with us when that happens. If we drive disruption, then you have to be here with us. Okay. And then we have, I know, we have administration educators who embrace this discussion. It happens all the time here. These are not people in this district who sit on their laurels, who sit on what's happened. They are always looking for innovation. And they and we need your support as we move along and we think about things we need to change and as we deal with the economic and educational issues. We pride ourselves on excellence. Yeah, maybe in a global level, we may be mediocre, but we're darn well delivering really, really well here in Maine. That's why we are a desirable place to be here in, at um, RSU 22. And we have more to do. Our strategic plan really speaks to the issues of changing the way we deliver education and the expectations and needs of our students and the economy and the pressures of our community. And we have energy and expertise to be innovative. It happens every day. So I wanted to thank the folks from the town for your candor and the materials that you brought to help support your position and the conversation. And I hope that we can start the year with that conversation instead of end it so that we're together in how we develop this school, its relationship with this community, and the budgets going forward. So we look forward to working with you in your civic roles, and we really look forward to working with the Education Foundation as we move ahead to thinking about how we will deliver education in 2016. So, and I believe that you had some things you needed to provide as right. information. We had some questions asked last evening that we wanted to follow up on. <clears throat> the first question was the restoration of the $140,000 that uh, occurred at the district budget meeting. You all should have a handout, but just in case you don't, that $140,000 is made up of the following. Number one would be the honorarium, the middle school foreign language, which is about $8,000. The restoration of what we used to call department heads, which now we refer to as academic team leaders, that was about $28,000. A grade three teacher at Weatherby at $55,000, and guidance uh, 0.8 and 0.5 to a total of about $48,000. So those were the items that we restored after the voters uh, increased the budget at the district budget meeting. I also gave to our Winterport people, if other people are interested, uh, relevant to the question pertaining to adult ed in Winterport, just summarizing it, uh, Matt Tardy had a very quick analysis pointed out that we have about 100 people uh, participating. He brought to our attention that we have a collaborative with the uh, rec department there. Uh, the citizens have over uh, 500 online courses to take advantage of. 120 adult ed classes. Uh, they also have another uh, collaborative effort with other entities and also moving forward with our new uh, high school, what used to be called GED, which is now uh, high set. It's a, a graduation um, testing format. So that gives you some background with respect to the participation of our Winterport citizens. I think those were the two major, adult ed and new money. If I'm not mistaken, Emil, is that yes. it? Yep. Okay. Were there any other questions that the budget committee members had that we wanted to address before we open up for public comment? I do think one of our members had a question for you, Ivan. I'm sorry. Ivan? Ivan, you were going to bring some information? Yes. Yeah. Ivan? Yes, last night uh, 
one of the comments that came out when we asked you that we could not support three hundred thousand dollars in Hamden was it was very distinct that it came out and said take it out of your fund balance mm -hmm. you're carrying three and a half million dollars um, I did the research today on that I don't think I have enough for everyone but I, I, I got some out. perhaps this is where you I'll let you share those I'll let you share these um, to find out because I said I would be back to you with this this is our audit, and I assume this is this is where you got the three point uh, three point five million dollars. I, I didn't see this item. I just had it in a conversation with town manager Lasalle, okay. so I didn't see an itemization of it. Well, at, at the end of our at the end of our fiscal year, yeah. June thirtieth, the the total fund balance was three point uh, five six six yeah. uh, million dollars. If, if you look at the top of that, the first four items on there are all restricted items. They're saying that that money has to be there. You cannot spend that money. Some of it has to do with the landfill, where the state has come in and said, this is what you'll set aside. I believe that's the bottom one of $1.9 million. Okay, so we end up with, uh, excuse me, uh, 395, the committed. So we end up with, with a million nine, almost $2 million. Um, our town's budget is, is the total expenditure of the town is 13.5 million. So if we had 10%, we'd, we'd be at 1.3. We're at 1.9. Now, the way that works is we get paid twice a year. You get paid monthly. Mm -hmm. We get paid twice a year. We just got paid in April, okay, when the taxes come out. There's other periods of time that we receive things, hopefully. And when the taxes come out, we hope that everyone pays them, but that doesn't take place. <laughs> So we have to have a surplus balance to carry through. I know that I believe last month we were almost late in paying you. You were. That's we were late. You That's were because late. we didn't have cash. Yep. We don't have any surplus. And when it gets done at the end of the year that this money is here, those monies go back into the budget, okay, and are allocated to whatever needs to be done in the budget. There is no pot of gold. There is no anything setting anywhere. There is nothing we can take $300,000 out of. Okay, if you were in business, it would be called a profit. And you dump it back in or pay taxes on it or whatever. So there is nothing. Last night you said, that's the way we should pay it. We don't have that to pay. Okay, it is not there. If we end up with 200000 last year we ended up with more. Okay, that goes back into our budgets to be allocated towards police, fire, public works, whatever we want to do. And that's hoping that everyone pays their taxes and that we don't lose things like Collin Transportation, uh, uh, the uh, concrete plant out there that we lost, the uh, Bangor Daily News. When we lose those, we use huge chunks of money. You people don't have that. You get a check every month from someone. Okay, so that's what that come in there. We don't have that to do. That was my follow up on that. So I wanted you to understand that to think that we can just go down and erase $300,000 out of that bunch of budget, we can't do that. It has to be added back in. I don't want to belabor the point, but help me understand the unassigned at $1.9 million. So unassigned to me would be not dedicated. Am I misreading that? No, you are not misreading that. Okay. At June 30th, okay, that was what was in okay. the budget. That is our cushion. Okay. That's what we had to spend until we got taxes in, yeah. okay, in October. Okay. We had no monies coming in. Well, you, you get things. You register your car. Yeah. You register your snowmobile or your ATV or whatever. Yeah. We get those floating in. Okay. Thank you. So that's okay. what that is. So okay. it's not there. Okay. All right. Thank you, Ivan. Yeah. Uh, were there any other questions? I think we covered the uh, landscapes and the, the, the new money from last year's uh, district budget meeting, the adult ed offerings. Yep. Ivan's point. Are there any um, other questions from the budget? <coughs> and we have a public comment. Uh, yes, we should interject right here an opportunity for the public to make any comments. Uh, I, I did un unfortunately admit it on the agenda, but please insert it now. So this will be an opportunity for people from the public to make their comments to uh, the budget committee as we uh, prepare to deliberate the composition of the proposed budget. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to jump in, but I'd like to ask uh, a financial question, question of the, uh, the budget committee. Uh, when we, we have a budget and finance committee that we set on the council over there, and this year we direct our town uh, 
uh, manager that when she comes in with a budget, we tell her financially where we want to be. This year we told her we want a zero increase. Unlike other years where we have said decrease what you spent last year. Okay, we asked for zero. Is that what you propose and what is the amount you propose to your superintendent? Your only employee is the superintendent. He has a whole large crew underneath him, but he's your employee. You are responsible for $29 million of taxpayers' money. What is your proposal to him when it comes down for financing? What do you tell him? We tell him. Uh, to, yep, go ahead. I am the chair, yep, so I think yep, I can speak. Yeah. You can. <coughs> um, the, what we expect from our superintendent is to bring in the budget that we need. That and, Because you said we don't lose chunks of money. We absolutely do, and we did this year. We lose, we, how many years in a row now have we been losing chunks of money? We've lost 616000 last three years from the state. There are not two more fiscally conscious people, I think, in this room than these two people. And so, as a board, we expect them to come back with the absolute best budget that they can, given the financial constraints and the needs of the district, many of which we can't change or cut because of the regulations that are on us. And it, it has come in, and we've said, mm, we're not really sure we want to go there. But we do not, on November 1st, say, deliver me an X budget, because these two people are responsible for developing a budget that manages the district. And then we evaluate what's in, what's out. We give guidance throughout the year from our committees and assess whether we're comfortable with that budget at the time, which is what we've been doing for the last month. So no, we don't micromanage them and tell them 0%. We say we expect them to deliver the best budget with the constraints that we have at the time. Is that fair, proof? Very well said. Ivan, I may add, is that uh, through that deliberations, we are very conscious in the administrative team and look at the impact of all of our municipalities. We're very conscious if we have this budget proposal and ready to submit to the budget committee, what's that mean for Hamden, Newburgh, Winterport, and now Frankfort? And in years past, it's been very common practice that we've reduced the budget further, even before I get to the budget committee, because the way our formula works, as you know, it may put an undue you, excuse burden. Me, you've, re, you've reduced the increase, I'll, correct? Let me, re, let me restate it. I've modified my budget. I've modified the modified budget. Modified the increase in your budget. Let me just say I've modified the budget, okay, because it could be a modification of a decrease, increase, whatever. So in other words, I would say before I reveal the budget to the budget committee, the administrative team, obviously led by myself, looks at the impact of all of our municipalities. Because a couple of years ago, well, matter of fact, our Winniport citizens will remind us that over the last four or five years, Winniport's had a fair number of increases because their, pro because their property values increased. We are very conscious of that before that budget becomes public. So when I deliver the budget, I'm delivering a budget I think is going to be advantageous to the district, move the district forward, and also, as I said, taxpayer, uh, a level of consciousness with respect to the taxpayer. In fact, I think this list right here is in fact one of the examples of when you were getting right down to the end of adjustments that, that had correct. to be made in order to have a, a budget that, that is correct. would pass muster. That's correct. Any other questions or comments from me? Sure. I have a comment. Um, you know, as a, as a town management, uh, you can go to your manager and ask them, you know, whatever you want, zero increase, but I'm not going to try to debate how fiscally responsible that is. I just don't know how realistic it is. Uh, every, everything in this Realistic for the last three years. Everything in this economy increases. There, there's, a, there's a constant cost of living increase. Um, you know, just look at, look at the CPI statistics. You know, right now the government says that, that all items minus food and energy is increasing at 1.5%. Food at 1.7%. Add energy for another roughly half percent, that's 3.6%. And I don't even believe those numbers. So when the, mo the biggest employer and the most important organization in this town 
is submitting a, a gross increase of 1.78%. <clears throat> How is that out of whack or, or out of line when they've demonstrated consistently that each year losing millions of dollars from, from out of the budget from the state, we're down to cutting to the bone in terms of the academic uh, services, programs and services that, that they are tasked to provide to the, uh, to the families and the uh, students in, the, in this uh, district. I don't think it's an unreasonable increase. In fact, I would make the argument that it's, uh, as they were trying to make the point last night, it's not good business. Anyone else want to comment? Okay. I can't tell if there's anybody. Oh, oh there is. That's, that's Buddy. <laughs> Buddy, did you have anything you wanted to say to that? Um, I worked with a lady today that lives alone in Newburgh, and she owns 65 acres. She pays $3,200 in taxes. And I told her about the meeting I went to last night. And she uh, kind of nodded her head. She's 60 years old. She does my painting for me. Um, and I asked her, I said, what would you think if your taxes went to 3500 3600 And she told me that if it's for education, I don't have a problem with it. And I can tell you, and I, and I can tell you I feel the same way. Again, Hamden, Rick and Emo, you've always believe that I thought that Hamden is probably the best school in the state of Maine. That's because of like you two guys are fiscally responsible just as well as I have to be as a selectman in Newburgh. And like she said, I don't have a problem with this for education because Hamden does have the best education. Um, as long as the money is spent right. You know, I understand I haven't come to a lot of these meetings. I've come to some of them. I try to understand on where the money is going, how it's being spent. Uh, we all see increases, like he's saying it's one and a half percent to 1.78, an increase of the school budget to be 1.78. It is really not a lot, but when you boil down to a small town like Newburgh or Frankfort, where we <coughs> have no industry, we have, I mean, even our dairy farms are going by the wayside, even though you can't tax them. People are going to pay for it. I'm going to say 90% of the IRSU 22 people that pay taxes in the four towns are probably willing to pay for an increase. The question is, once they get their tax bills, how much of this is school? How much is this is for the town? How much is for Penobscot County tax? And what is for Frankfort and all the county tax? So, you know, I think you guys are all doing a good job. I'm usually just here for listening to you. Um, I had a conversation with Pete today. You know, most, like I say, most of the people don't have a problem paying for education. As long as they know the people are spending the money the right way. Um, that's pretty much all I can say. And I do tell them that you guys are doing a good job. I hate to be in your shoes because I've been in your shoes because it's no fun. Definitely hard work, as I can attest in the many conversations I've had with these two, as they spend enormous amount of times looking. They were looking today, looking and looking. Did we miss anything? And we know we're missing some things. Our children are giving up some things this year. Okay, any other comments? All right, deliberation time. So we are we ready tonight to talk about moving this budget to the recommending this budget to the full board? That's where we're at. That's where we're at. Welcome. Go, Martha. <coughs> as you know, I'm not happy about not having foreign language, at least in the middle school, or as as Peter said yesterday, it ought to be even lower. I, you know, I, I'm very proud of our district, and I think we've done a good job, but we can't rest on the world. So I'm 
I, I'm really disappointed that that's not in there. Uh, but we went through, I think, the proper analysis of what absolutely had to be in there. And we, we had to sacrifice that. Um, so I'm content with, with moving this, um, recommending that we move this budget forward to the full board. You know, I, I w I've always been an advocate for foreign language, too. And, but, like, we talked about, you know, we're, we're bleeding and we have a spra sprained ankle. You know, mm -hmm. we need to take care of, of the cut. Mm -hmm. You know, and we've talked in, intensively with, you know, the, the administration at the lower level schools um, as far as reading goes. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the need for extra adults, ed techs. You know, I, I would love to make cuts in other areas, but I know that we can't do that. Um, so, yes, you know, I, I think that we've worked very diligently to, to trim this budget as much as we can, and I'm ready to move forward with this. Okay. No, I'm not on the budget. There's, we're the only three on the committee. Right? Oh, no, he, he, he okay, he I'm he sorry, he. <laughs> No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let you talk. We will let you talk. Even if I'm not I mean, quite honestly, I'd like to see some cuts here in this budget. But I don't know how you can honestly look at an administrator that comes in and says, I have 30 children in my school who are not going to get reading help. Right. We need to have first and second graders reading. Or we're going to be sitting here eight years from now wondering why our kids, our numbers in science aren't there because the kids can't read their textbook. Right. And we won't even remember why they can't read the textbook. <laughs> Most of us might not be sitting here well, to know what decisions we made that impacted that board. And here we have Reedsbrook, 26, 27 kids per teacher. So we need that teacher there. We can't, we can't tell these kids that they got to crowd into this room and, and have these teachers spread out like they are. So like I said, honestly, I would like to see some cuts here. But I just don't see how we could do it. I think we need to move forward with this budget. Okay. Amy, I think at this point, um, I, I'm new to the table, so I don't even pretend to know what everything that happened before I got here. But um, at this point, I don't, I think this is what we have to go with. And I would support this one. Um, however, as you know, I think we need to get working very hard at looking at things a little bit differently and getting really innovative and creative about how we um, offer services mm -hmm. for the next year. But at, at this point in the game, yeah. Okay. Uh, um, you know, I was here when we had the discussion where the $120,000 was included in the budget and then the principals, various principals <coughs> presented some of their, you know, some serious needs and so I'm pleased that we have adjusted where, where those funds are going to. Um, I'd be interested, not this year, but I'd be interested to think about p what Mr. DeWitt's idea was uh, yesterday about bringing uh, foreign language into the younger grades, into the elementary school, and perhaps getting rid of, in, in my mind, getting rid of some of the basic uh, language in the high school. Considering what's I'm sort of an advanced um, mm -hmm. program in the high school, but really getting them started in younger grades, I'd be interested to see if there's some way we can figure out the costs of moving those beginning languages from the high school to some other some other grade. I, I don't think that's up for today or for this budget, but I think that's something we should think about. I think that idea generated a lot of buzz yesterday. Yeah, it was very interesting, <laughs> yes. It sounded like a good idea to me. Jim? Again, I'm not a member of the budget committee and I came in the process late in the in the process um, but I remember full well touring some of our schools in Winterport seeing what's going on and I've become very familiar with other school systems especially one where a new principal is coming from McGraw Every school district is facing the same problem. I would like to see this budget cut. And I'm looking at what has been cut. I am not happy, and I made this clear, I think, 
a couple of weeks ago, I'm not happy with cutting language programs. I agree with Peter. Yeah, if our, we are sending kids out in the world who can't, can't speak a foreign language, we are, we are hamstringing them. But we have to make a cut somewhere. Is that going to be in favor of providing the needs of children coming into the system with special needs and making sure they get through? It's a balancing act. So we have to cut the, the languages. I'm not sure where else we can cut. I, I know as a resident of Hamden, I don't want my taxes going up. I don't have any kids in the school system anymore. My neighbors do. <coughs> All my neighbors do. <laughs> and I think I owe them an obligation to make sure that they have the schools that they, their children need. Yeah. Yeah, between now and next week, when the budget's presented to the full school board, I'll be taking some more looks at it. I, if I come up with some suggestions, I'll raise them next week. For now, I unfortunately think this is the best we can do. I would encourage you if you do see something to get with Emil and Rick because they'll be able to answer uh, any questions about what you might see. If I can find Believe me, they almost don't need to look at their books to answer the question. <laughs> They've got it so locked in their heads. Okay, so do we need a motion? Then? Yes, you do. Okay, yes. so I need a motion to move this. But only the budget committee. Yes, right. that's right. Right, only the budget committee votes on this. So that's Heath, Martha, Lance, and Cindy. Okay, so I need a Would motion. Would I be out of place if I asked another question? Sure. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't notice it. I wanted to bring it up. It, was, it happened last night, in, and um, I've written some things down, and I, I would like if you could clarify for me on this because I'm, I'm not sure where it fits in and looking over your figures uh, for what you proposed. But you said you had 1.8 million that you set aside for teachers. We discussed yeah. that and we yeah. and yes. talked to bringing that stuff mm -hmm. like that. Now, my assumption is under this that that's paid out every year and then you put Money. back in again in budget? That's correct. Okay, that's, thank you. Matter of fact, it's, commit, it's, it's committed wages, Ivan. Yeah, but every year that's depleted. And then every year it's added back in again, just just like we do on. Okay, thank you. Right. To give us some comfort level, Ivan, because that was a good conversation yeah. last night. Not surprising, we called our auditor today. <laughs> as as Emil said, surprised. tell us in very kindergarten terms what this 1.8 million means. And Emil, she said that it's a committed payment to teachers on June 30th, and according to your contract, you can pay that 1.8 million beyond June 30th in the summer payment plan. That's basically what it is. It's a committed payment to committed teachers. Payment. And you're overlapping a contract with a fiscal year. Yeah. Oh, because yeah. they don't have the same end date. That's, That's correct. That's so correct. it's, it's so actually one, used exactly the same way as our surplus fund. That's right. It's all bleeded down and then it's added back That's in right. the next That's year. That's exactly yep. right. Okay, and it's, thank you. Yeah. Uh, I just want to clarify the point you just asked again. See, come June 30, teachers still have five checks per their contract because the contract goes to August 31. So you have right. that two-month differential. See, that's what we that's what we call that right. accrual of the summer loan pay. All right, we'll go back to the motion again. We're ready for um, a motion for the for the budget for this year. I move that uh, the budget committee uh, suggest to the board that the budget that has been presented that we've been talking about for the last at least two nights mm -hmm. um, be submitted and um, that we urge the board to approve it. I'll second that. Okay. And just okay. for clarification, if I may yeah. be exactly specific, Martha. Yeah. Okay, yes. That would be, be 28838498 dollars and eighty seven cents. Eighty-seven. Is that eighty-seven? I got eighty-six online. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's right. go with math. <laughs> <It's 87. laughs> Whatever it is. Eighty-six, Emil. Is it eighty-six? I've got a penny in my pocket. It's a rounding number. <laughs> 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 it's all the <laughs> 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 
I'd put the 86. 86. <laughs> I'll give you the 86. Thank you. Okay, my, my motion is amended. So. 86. So, this all in favor? 87. No, 87. All right, that's unanimous. Okay. Who right. seconded that? Lighthouse. 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 Thank you. Okay, so that will go to the Board of Directors uh, next Wednesday evening. Thank you, all of you administrators, for the time you put into this and for coming here tonight. Appreciate all your hard work. And uh, hopefully we'll see some of you at the board meeting in case there are additional questions yeah, next absolutely. week. And thank you to the community leaders to come and share your concerns and thoughts with us and be a part of the conversation. We appreciate it.